You had an issue last night uh, with some coaches regarding body types and some coaches subscribing to the notion that they want a specific body type for a specific position. You had a personal take on this. I need to know more about it, and I want to give you my opinion as well. Oh, yeah, so like the question was, you know, what body type for each position do you want your tackles long? And, you know, everyone kind of subscribed to, you know, tall, athletic, good feet, and we want the road grader. And then my center has to have a 4.6 GPA and never miss class. So th this, this hits home with me because, you know, my first from seven to seven years old to my senior year in high school, it was too small, too small, too small. Yeah. And then finally the team was so bad that they were like, you know, if I was out there whooping some butt, hey, you know what? He, he's good enough. That's the he's one. Good enough, yeah. So I worked my way in, but, you know, I'm 5'11". Right. Now I'm 6'5". Yeah. And uh, luckily I grew after college. You're six what? At least five. I'll let that slide. So, ahead, but keep, in keep high school, going. I was 5'11", 195, <laughs> and I played left guard. Uh -huh. So, th by anyone's standards, I'm too small. So, if, if that was the case, I'm not an OLP. I didn't have, was, have a vested NFL career. I wasn't a Hall of Famer, a humble state, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Because if we subscribe to body types versus how effective yeah. or can they get the job done, right. each player is regardless in spite of mm -hmm. what your standards may be. You're ruining, you're taking away a, a, a person's chance of success or right. their future. So it's, it's personal to me when I hear coaches still subscribing to this. It's stupid. But what about the notion that some coaches use it as just uh, context? Or well, it's okay for me to like a certain thing. What's the downside of that? Because you'll start searching and you'll overlook what someone really brings to the table. These like comparisons and, and creating these boundaries, first off, that robs people of joy outside of football. Yeah. But in the game, that's you're 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 missing you're missing out on guys, and you're not going to be as excited about this guy mm -hmm. that uh, potentially will be calling you a moron after his NFL career. Right. Because you right. know the truth is, I got coaches that said I was too small and I couldn't play at the high school level. Yeah. Those coaches always come up to me when I'm back home trying to be my friend. Hmm. I don't have time for you because you'd have time for me because I didn't fit your standard of size. Hmm. So. You know what? And I'm not a I'm not unique right. situation. There's so many people like me. But that's the irony. Many of the people that subscribe to this uh, this ideal of the prototype, they were coaches or they were athletes that are now the coaches. That when they were athletes, they didn't fit the prototype either. Yeah. So now so it's like, well, it's always been done that way. Don't you want to make don't the you want game? To change it? Don't you want to make it better? I can tell you, like, okay. This is why I don't believe in this stuff. Like, okay, Walter Jones is six foot four. Mm -hmm. That's not tall enough for a left tackle. Kelvin Beach Kelvin is 6'3". Kelvin Beach is 6'3". Mm -hmm. That's not tall enough for a left tackle. You were, what did you weigh as a center? 305. 305. Yeah. Only was 285. Right. And he wasn't big enough. He wasn't big enough. Right. That's crazy. You think now that someone like Olin Cruz probably wouldn't play Division One football. He, yeah. And myself either. Yeah, you, I, I, well, we would have had the best O line at Humboldt State. Yeah, for sure. Me, but you, you and Olin. <laughs> if you think about it, from uh, maybe Division One, I, I wouldn't have definitely been on Ohio State. Maybe like a mid major. Yeah, like a Mac school. I would have been at for sure a Mac school, but I would not have received an offer from Ohio State. Uh, I'm not sure if a school like Washington would be looking for a 260 pound center in today's game because yeah. when you look at the the articles on this scouting.com or this scouting.com when you see 62 260 center it's like oh like what is he going to play linebacker yeah. like no I'm here to play center I'm here to play center I'm going to move for those guards no and yeah. like we're at humble yeah um you know we have Josh here I'm what 62 mm -hmm. Josh is what how tall is Josh 510 and he's one of the best guards yeah. ever to come out of there uh, when I played, I was the smallest on the O-line. Maybe one of our tackles was maybe lighter, but he was taller. Right. Um, but I was the smallest on the O-line, and every year the head coach would tell the strength coach, hey, we got to get bigger guys. Yeah. The, this year our thing in recruiting is bigger guys. The big guys never panned out Go for outside you. of Alex Kappa. Go he wasn't you. a big guy. He was 240 pounds when he came into high school. Hmm. So yet we had all these all-American walk-ons, all-conference walk-ons, 
that were too small, didn't fit it. And somehow it's still every offseason, let's go get these big guys and give them a scholarship, which is valuable at a humble yeah. stake because yeah. there's not a lot of money, and then yeah. they don't pan out. I'm right. like, what are we missing here? Why are we trying to fit to these molds? Like his, History didn't tell a good story mm -hmm. here. I think what we're missing is the idea that skills will always ru rule the game. But when we subscribe to methods, and it kind of brings it all back together, yeah. when we subscribe to methods, we need a ideal to fit the method. So my particular method with left tackles, I want you to have reach. I want you to have length. I want you to be a guy that has really good feet and can cover space. Well, if you can take any athlete and apply the principles, I don't care if you're 6'2 or 6'7, whatever it may be, if that athlete can move within principles, they understand how to play the game. They understand the context of the game. It does not matter. No. It just doesn't matter. Are there some benefits to maybe having two inch longer arms? But what the hell does it matter if you don't know how to strike yeah, anyway? Seriously. What does it matter if you, have, you don't know how to move your feet? Yeah. What does it matter if your players are in bad stances? It doesn't matter what you're looking for. But this is, this is the beginning of that slippery slope. When your methods aren't working, you're looking for something bigger and better. Well, you got a 6'6 six, six tackle, your methods aren't working, well now you need a 6'7 six, tackle. Now you need a 6 yeah. tackle. Well, your methods aren't working because all of a sudden your 305 pound guard can't stop a bull rush. Now you need a 315 pound guard. Yeah. Now you need a 330 pound guard. At what point does it stop? Yeah, I just need football players. That's it. I just need Texas football players. That's all you, you ever need. What do you say? Like, I, and I've personally heard this man. He's big for nothing. He was like, "That's the softest six foot eight guy I've ever seen." <laughs> We're like, okay, so that just goes back to the whole thing that you didn't develop the skill, that your drills didn't transfer to right. developing, and then you also were caught in this dogma of. A six foot eight player is supposed to be good. Correct. No, they got to be developed like everyone else. And if they don't, it, it has nothing to do with their height. It, it has, has nothing to do with, with you. It's you. And the minute we start saying, oh, you know, he's just, he's not big enough or he's big for nothing. Not tough enough. You, you're giving your power away. Yeah. Now, now you're saying, I can't develop him. What, then what the heck are you doing? Yeah. If that's what we're going to go by. But if we're going to live in this world where your identity is wrapped up in what you believe, and your methodologies will never get to the point where we be can truly begin to develop our athletes. We'll always be looking for the next big thing. We'll always be looking for the next drill, the next method, the next scheme, the next whatever it might be. But if we live in the world where we understand principles, those principles can apply to anything and anybody, any method, any drill, any scheme, any system. But that takes time. And that's the process. And if you aren't willing to go through the process as a coach, damn it, I don't want to hear you talking about the process on your locker room materials, or on social media, or anywhere else. Because if you're going to challenge your players to get uncomfortable and challenge them to be more and to discover more about who they are as players and as people, well, you better sign up as well. So that's it for this episode. Anything else, brother? No, I don't Good. Know. We got a day full of work uh, to take care of. And um, I'm going to go home, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> take care.